What's going on guys? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, so this topic, we're going to be talking about shill bidding, um, how that works, how it affects the market, how it changes the market, how the market can easily be artificially inflated. And I think this is something that's pressing and is relevant uh, because right now we're seeing all time highs in sword and shield prices. A lot of people are very bullish. A lot of people are very excited, but something just isn't adding up. And as someone who has a closet full of these kinds of products and wants to see them would, would, uh, would benefit from seeing them rise in price. I'm also skeptical uh, of the market because I know things are kind of in a downtrend right now. They're kind of fizzling out. People are, have been leaving the hobby for some time. Um, and this would challenge that. The prices that are rising would challenge that or it would indicate that people are all investing in Sword and Shield, which I just find to be really, really hard to believe. What I think is probably more likely is some form of show bidding. Uh, but I want to talk about my own personal experiences because I just had this experience the other night. Uh, so recently, I have not announced this yet, but I have sold my first edition Charizard. It was only a PSA 5. Uh, it will be replaced with a PSA 9 at some point. And um, I thought this was fitting because I genuinely believed that something went wrong in my auction the other night. And I decided instead of, you know, buying into the FOMO and feeling the feeling of artificial uh, inflation of the card's value, I would just let the auction run, lose it, and I would at least have some content to make about it and have a story. So for the entire week, I have been watching... <laughs> I've been watching, well, first off, I sent my, it took a week, but I submitted my Charizard first edition to the eBay vault. If you don't know what the vault is, you should get acquainted with it. It is changing uh, everything about eBay. It, it makes buying and selling singles way more um, value filled than dealing with sealed product. I'm gonna tell you why. Sealed product does not have any kind of authenticity guarantee. It does not have the vault. You cannot avoid seller fees. Sealed product, you will always have to take a 13% hit on, and that's something that people really do need to think about. Now, for those of you that are going the PSA 10 alternate art modern route, that actually might work out really nicely, and here's why. You can send those cards to the vault. You can sell them without taking a hit on fees, or I think eventually there's going to be a 3% fee, uh, a buyer premium uh, maybe, or a 3% seller fee, but I don't think it's been enacted yet. Uh, but anyways, I it took about a week, but I sent my first edition Charizard to, the, to eBay after receiving a really good offer on it. I did not want to take the, the hit on fees. And I thought about that with, with sealed investing, and you can't do that with sealed investing. No matter what, unless you find deals locally, you will not be able to unload that stuff without shipping it and selling it online and taking a hit on fees. But that's neither here nor there. What we're talking about here is shill bidding and, and my experiences with it. Time and time again, whether it's on theme decks, which above me, I have a row of old vintage theme decks, nothing really too crazy. Uh, a lot of some of my nicer stuff is actually behind the camera on the other side of the wall. Um, but, uh, and in briefcases, but for the most part, uh, whether it's Game Boy games, um, CIB or sealed and see it. What CIB means, uh, is, um, comes in box. Uh, so it might not be sealed, but it might come in the box with everything present. This is something, this is a terminology used a lot with selling, uh, old game consoles such as Game Boys, Game Boy games, Nintendo 64s, Game Cubes, uh, you know, uh, Game Boy SPs, Nintendo DSs. This is something used for a long time, CIB. Anyways, whether it's, uh, theme decks or CIB games or boxes or, you know, collectible um, special sets or booster boxes, whatever it have you, I have consistently had auctions where I knew the price was going for way too much. And I think a lot of times these are people that have already owned these items that are bidding the items up. People have actually been caught red-handed uh, doing show bidding. Uh, last year, there was a thing with, uh, I don't bring up names a lot, but this was caught red-handed right in the act of doing this. Um, but uh, Don Diego, which, you know, not knocking her as a content creator, not knocking her as an eBay seller, because um, she has some really cool listings, um, but 
she was caught pretty much red-handed right next to Pokey Radar bidding on his items and accidentally winning. Now, this was a video that popped up on my feed that I saw a year ago that I saw as well recently. And it reminded me that the same stuff that persisted a year ago is still persisting now. Um, and I see it with all kinds of products. Uh, usually I'll put a bid in that's fairly decent and before I know it, within five minutes, it will get upbid by an account with very low feedback. What do I mean by that? When you're on eBay and you're doing auctions, you can actually scroll down and go and check the bidders who are bidding on the items, and you can see what their feedback is. Why does this matter, Ryan? Who cares what their feedback is? Their feedback matters and is relevant because if someone has very low feedback, there's a very good chance that that could be a brand new account no, no, no foul, no foul there, uh, nothing murky there. But there's also just as likelihood that that account is a new account made for upbidding items uh, and artificially inflating the item's value and also creating more of a competitive uh, nature in the auctions, thus creating more competitive buyers uh, and, and bidders. And, and what that results in is stuff going way higher than it should be. And this is why a lot of people that are in the collecting hobby, a lot of people are doing deals privately, a lot of people are doing deals through PayPal goods and services, and they're just, they're committing to a deal, agreeing on a price, and then they're doing that deal. Why are people doing that deal? Well, one, they want to avoid fees on eBay. So they do it that way. It's quicker. It's quicker than sending it to the vault. Even still, the vault could take a week to two weeks because it has to go to California to be authenticated. And then it has to fly back. Um, I want to say to Delaware. I want to say Delaware is where the vault warehouse is, where they're, which is allowing them to get away from sales fees uh, or sales tax. Um, but it has quite a travel that it has to make, so a lot of people do deals privately. This also just results in overall way lower prices than eBay. So sometimes when I, when in certain group chats of mine, when I'll mention what a card sold for, or what it's going for, or what I'm putting a bid in, you know, a friend of mine or a fellow, you know, very, um, very experienced collector, a fellow collector will say, Orion, like that price is artificial, that price is way too high, I can't believe people are paying that. And even I myself see these auctions and go, wow, someone is willing to pay an arm and a leg for that card. And the last sale was a thousand, two thousand dollars less. Um, a perfect example is the uh, first edition Charizard. I was bidding on a first edition PSA 9 Charizard the other night. Um, I ended up letting the auction go. Um, what I saw was a bunch of low feedback bidders. Uh, the story checked out from the seller. The seller looked like they were just, they just didn't sell a lot of stuff, uh, but they seemed legit. They had like 30 feedback, so I'm sure they bought a couple items on eBay, but just hadn't sold many items on eBay. Um, anyways, they were selling the first edition Charizard for their expanding family, and I've got no issue with that. I told them I was very interested. I wanted to see more close-up pictures, and I was very excited, guys, to close a deal on one of my Ultimate Grail cards. Um, unfortunately, it did not work out. Um, you know, I told my wife, like, I'm going to sell my other first edition Charizard, which is now gone. So now I'm just Charizardless. But, um, you know, I sold that and told her, like, that's going to offset the cost of this other card. Um, but I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to buy it within my budget. I'm not going to overpay on this card. Um, and even at, at the price that it ended at, I, you know, I definitely thought about, you know, I should have put in one last bid to see if I could snipe the card. But at the end of the day, what I saw was really bothering me. So what I saw in the, in the bidding history of the card was a bunch of bidders that had one, two, six, zero feedback, all bidding up. Um, other bidders, legitimate bids. I saw maybe two bidders that had over a hundred feedback that placed a bid on that item. And then there was a private bidder, which I imagine was one of the, uh, the big cats of the investing, uh, buying Pokemon collecting, uh, universe. I'm sure when you have a private account, either something, I would think something sleazy is going on, something, you know, dirty is going on, or I would think that they just want, an, um, to be anonymous. So that way people don't see like, oh my God, this person has 5,000 feedback and is bidding on this card, which means I've got somebody who really knows what they're doing, who, who, want, who believes this card is valuable. I think sometimes having an anonymous private, private, private 
bidding identity, I think that can help a lot with keeping those bids uh, from getting artificially pumped even more. But basically, when I see those low feedback bidders, you know, that's that's somebody with either a new account who's very inexperienced. And why would somebody extremely inexperienced be buying a card for that high of value without really doing their research? I don't know. It, it just, it seems a little bit off to me. Typically, I would think somebody buying a card like that would be in the hobby for a long time, which means they would be buying a lot of stuff on eBay, which means they would have a lot of feedback to show for it. And that was not the case with any of these bidders. It was an old certificate. It was a two cert. Um, it was in an old PSA slab, and it even had some imperfections inside of the slab. So I thought, it's not the card, it's just the slab. I'm gonna put a solid bid on this, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till the very end, I and mean, I'm gonna try and, and get a snipe in. But I saw it right after it get listed, go from 15 to 15.5 to 16 to 17 to 17.5, all the way to 18.1, and it was the same accounts putting in multiple bids. Now that is definitely something that a newbie would do. That's something that a rookie would do. They would put in multiple bids like, oh, maybe I should go a little bit higher. Maybe I should set a higher bid. But what it also does in terms of shill bidding is it makes it appear that there's way more bids on that actual item. Now the higher you get in the caliber of items that you're buying, uh, the more money you have to put towards the next bid, right? So for a card like this Charizard, it was getting to a point where every bid has to be at least $100, $200 more on a card that's you know over $15,000. Um, initially, what, what I thought was really weird was, and I'd never seen this before, but this is just some information for you guys. If you ever look at a card like that, um, I got a message from eBay. I finally mustered up the strength to put in a bid. I was gonna put in a bid for 17.5. And I got a message from eBay saying that they could not go through because of my buying history and my selling history that they could not go through with the transaction that I would need to be double verified, which was a new thing I had never experienced. Guys, I actually have bought cards that were over $10,000 before. Um, this guy costed me, I think, $10,800. Um, so this is my Skyridge PSA 10 Charizard, absolutely beauty of a card. Um, but I have experienced buying high-end cards uh, from that purchase alone. So I thought it was, I thought it was kind of weird that eBay sent me that message, especially with my buying history. I've bought hundreds of, of high-end nice cards on, on eBay, so I don't know why I got that message. But I'm assuming now, if you buy anything over. $15,000, they probably want you to verify your identity and the card you're using, but that was weird because if I would have waited to the very last moment to put a bid on that card and I actually just decided, you know what, I'm gonna FOMO into this, I don't care if it's artificial or what, I would not have been able to get the card because it would have stopped me there. And I took that from a sign from the universe, honestly, because I do believe, you know, not necessarily, I'm not necessarily super religious or spiritual per se, but I believe that everything kind of does happen for a reason. And I try and learn from even my failures and mistakes. And um, what I did was think, what am I not seeing here? Because it's, it's asking me to verify my information. Maybe this is a sign from the universe. Let's take a deeper look at the, these bidders here. And that's when I really started looking at the bidder history, which I, I almost always do, but I usually don't do that until the very near, near close to the end of the auction. But um, when it didn't verify me, I said, you know what? Let's just, first, I'm gonna try and get verified, but then I wanna take a look at the bidder history and just see like, is there some weird reason that maybe I shouldn't be bidding on this card? I kinda took it from as a sign from the universe. Anyways, long behold, everybody had low feedback, like I just mentioned, and I just decided, you know what? I believe that this card is probably worth more so around fifteen to $16,000. There are big sellers that I respect but the prices to me don't seem in line with market. Um, Black Label Blaster I think has two um, and they're both over $20,000, which I think is a good bit more than market. Now this is, we're talking about one of the most iconic cards ever. So it's not to say that it doesn't have the value there, but the card was spiked, pumped, and in a bubble for the last two years, it reached $50,000 at one point, but really kind of settled around 30 and then 25 and then 20. And then we saw a sale in October from Z&G Emporium of 
um, and honestly, easily could dip below that to 15.8 or 15.5 or 15. No one can tell me that everything is just going up, right? We have to watch the trends. We have to watch, we have to learn from history repeating itself and seeing that stuff gets inflated and then falls back down. Um, the higher it goes up, the, the harder it's gonna come down, right? Um, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Um, so, you know, all that being said, shill bidding is just a part of auction uh, environments. It just is. You're going to see it on PWCC. You're going to see it probably on Heritage or Golden. You're going to see it on eBay especially. Uh, but what's frustrating with eBay is um, what's frustrating with eBay and, and shill, shill bidding is is literally defined as, you know, shill is somebody who gets somebody to, you know, um, to uh, conspire in gambling activities, but shill bidding is is the act of artificially inflating the price of something uh, by placing bids that you don't uh, you don't intend to make. The same thing that happened a year ago with Don Diego placing a bid on a Japanese gold star uh, Vaporeon that was Pokemon Radar's auction while they were sitting in the same room right next to each other. It's a really, really bad look when stuff like that happens. It's gonna happen regardless. You know, like maybe she was just trying to help out a homie, her and Pokemon Radar, maybe working together to work some deals, not throwing shade out on anybody. It, ju it just is what it is. Um, I, I did not really watch the, the full video, but I was kind of shocked to see that over again a year later and be like, damn, like, it doesn't seem like people made too much of a fuss about this, but that's probably just because it's more of a n normal thing in auctions than people realize. Like, yes, it's frowned upon, but at the same time, I would be lying to you if I never put in a shill bid, right? And this this doesn't mean like the, like I upbid something a friend listed. I've never done anything like that, which may seem a little more uh, insidious, but I have for a fact placed bids on on cards that I wasn't necessarily like sure I was gonna buy but I also thought you know what like I just paid top dollar market for this card why not try and get this one for a little bit less I'll put in a bid and if I don't win I don't win whatever this is also just the environment of bidding in general on eBay um, the more people pay for items on the market, the more people get even ripped off in some senses or overpay in some senses, the more they're going to want the next person to overpay on that item. People do not like to see, I don't like to see theme decks or grail cards or gold stars or crystals. I don't like to see them go in auction for way less than what I paid for. It's, it's very, uh, it's very anxiety ridden. It's worrisome. It makes you feel like the market is trending down. Uh, a great example was a, a lot of us, uh, a lot of Yos gold star. Uh, I paid like 25, 2600 for mine and there was an auction one ended at 2200. So, and that really, really hurt to see that. Now I didn't bid that auction up, but I definitely considered like putting in a $2,300, $2,400 bid just for the sake of getting another one that I could sell that, that I got for a cheaper price and it lowers my cost basis. So I think shill bidding is kind of hard to define with the average collector because I think a lot of collectors wanna get a good cost basis sometimes. So sometimes, and I know you guys can relate with this, sometimes we get caught in the act of buying multiple of the same cards, right? You guys have done this, we've all done this. Every now and again, you look at a card and you're like, oh, but that's an even better deal. Why am I seeing this a week later? There's an even better deal than I just paid. Um, patience pays in this hobby. Patience pays. And that's another reason that I didn't pick up the card last night. The auction ended at 18.2, which in my opinion is still kind of a good deal. Um, right now, uh, I know that someone's willing to accept 19.5 on one, but that just seems way too high to me. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I still think the first edition Charizard in a PSA 9 is probably closer to fifteen to $16,000. And I am more than willing to match a sale from four months ago in October, at the very end of October, that was 16.6. .6. I will pay 17.6. I'll pay $1,000 more than that price, but I'm not gonna pay two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 more than that price. It's already a, a, a Pokemon card that costs more than most nice sports cars used. So it's, uh, it's a lot of money to spend on a piece of cardboard. But uh, that being said, 
show bidding i think is just a part of the culture you're gonna see it everywhere you look but it's good to be aware of it because you don't always see it and sometimes when you see an auction go for like an all-time low or a new low that's really in my opinion that's representative of the fact that there was no one artificially bidding on that no one had the money to say hey maybe i'll put a bid on this and i'll lower my cost basis on the last one that i purchased like basically just like timing too no one saw it in time it was a rough time for the economy there are so many different factors that go into play but Usually when you see something go for an all-time low, which is why auctions are so awesome and can be so much fun, aside from the gambling, you know, uh, addictive aspect of it, um, you can get some really, really good deals. Um, I saw um, one of my most sought after theme decks that I want to collect for my, for my Wizards of the Coast theme deck collection. It went for 350. That deck's like a $600 deck. It was a Turmoil Legendary Collection deck, like $600 deck, easy, but went for 350. That was because I didn't have the money to bid on it that week. I didn't feel like, I also didn't feel like putting a bid in for something and again, artificially inflating it. When I first got into collecting, like when I would buy, when I was buying booster boxes, right? When I was starting to stack up my sword and shield booster boxes, I would win an Evolving Skies box for 140, 150, right? But then when there would be another one and it would be at 130, I would put in a bid in for 140, 150, just because I knew that I already paid that much for the first one, why would I not pay that again? And also I wanted to lower my cost average. What I wasn't thinking about was that if I don't touch this until the very end, the bids have nowhere to go. Right, So I think a lot of new collectors coming to this hobby need to understand that it's not going to get more affordable to collect. It's not going to get easier to collect any of these products unless we all come together and stop artificially bidding on things and inflating the price of things. And this is something that I have been guilty of. I have... You know, I have always put bids in on gold stars. I've always offered people that list their, their gold stars. I pretty much message every single person with an offer, even if they're like semi low ball offers, I offer them just because you never know what kind of deals you're going to get. But one thing I've learned is it works the same way with offering people. It goes to their head. They think, oh, I've already got an offer on this. I, I you know, I don't really need, I'm not going to have to sit on this too long. And now I can leverage your offer to get an even better offer. No, 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 no. Back that up. When you put stuff on eBay, you are asking for what people are willing to pay for it. Most people are not really truly willing to pay what they're bidding on. It's just a competitive cycle of like, in my opinion, competition. It's just like pure competition. I remember when I was first bidding on stuff, it was like a feeling of like, I'm not going to let you win this. I'm going to win this. I, I've got this. I am buying this. I've got the money. I'm buying this. It was really stupid. It was really stupid is what it was. And I'm now finally learning that like, when I see a really cool item, I am not gonna jump on it. I'm gonna throw it in my watch list. I am not gonna put a single bid on it. And I'm gonna check back up on it later and see how it does. Also, that's a great way of letting the market cool down and seeing where prices really are gonna fall. Um, I will admit sometimes when I really, really want something, I'll put a I'll put a bid on it. I'll put one bid on it just so it's in my bids and auctions, um, just to track it because I do find that when I put stuff in my bids, uh, usually I stay on top of it and I don't miss the auctions. Whereas when I have stuff in my watch list, a lot of times it just flies under the radar because it's not the first thing that I see when I go to check up on stuff. So I'm getting more in the habit of checking my watch list instead of checking my bids. Um, and essentially I'm window shopping a lot more, which I think I need to make a whole separate video on. Um, that is going to be a fun video. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, just watch out uh, when you're bidding on stuff. Look at all the bids when you're when something pops up on the market. I know sometimes it's like if I send a good offer, if I send a decently strong offer, this person might accept it right when it comes on the market. And I've been a person to make those offers, right? Um, when I got my Torchic, recently I got a Gold Star Torchic. When that popped up on the market, I wasted no time. I sent that, I sent an offer like within an hour of the card being posted to the market. Um, and we worked out a deal and we closed on it. Um, but. In all honesty, if I would have waited a little bit longer, it might have been put to an auction, which I think it would have ended up going for a lot more than what I paid for it uh, because auctions are competitive and I think a lot of times they go for way more than they should. Um, 
But, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I forgot what I was even going to say. Anyways, um, bidding on stuff. Check the bids. Don't... Oh, yeah. My Torchic. Um, I wish I would have waited a little bit longer. I wish I would have waited a little bit longer to make that offer um, and make a less strong offer where I'm actually getting a little bit more of a deal because you never know what people's situations are. You know, that's not to say you should always take advantage of somebody in a tough time, but you never know what people's situations are. If they have no attachment to the cards anymore and they just want cash back as soon as possible, people won't be firm at all. They will they will bend and, and flex on their, on their sales and do whatever it takes to get stuff moving. If there's an emergency, if someone really needs the money, they'll do whatever it takes to get stuff moving. If you're just in the market, the longer you're in the market, you realize that it really, it, you know, my friend said it best last night. Um, shout out to, uh, shout out to Jodo Jake. Uh, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, you know, it's okay to take your time. This stuff is not going anywhere. Anywhere. A lot of these products are not going anywhere. And and we can take all of this that we've talked about and we can apply it to sword and shield booster boxes. Um, I don't think this product is going anywhere. And that, that doesn't mean that I won't be looking at boxes to buy for auctions if the auctions don't go crazily uh, high in price. But I am not going to pay inflated prices on these boxes. Even if it's been a couple of years, I'm just not going to do it. If I can't find any deals, so be it. Um, what I will say is somebody left a comment yesterday about Brilliant Stars, um, about if I buy a Brilliant Stars booster box, if I buy six from Pokemon Center, uh, will it come in a case? And someone responded, most typically it does come in a case unless there's like weird um, organizational issues, but usually it comes in a case, which is pretty cool because you can still get brilliant stars for the MSRP, the Pokemon Center price of 143. So six of those would be 600, 840, about 850, uh, which in my opinion is a fine price to pay on a case of brilliant stars. I think it's going to do really well in the long run, but uh, yeah, I really, really want to invest in sealed products but I, I still have bigger goals that I'm trying to cross off myself. But man, if I could, if I could, if I could have been into collecting way sooner, I would have crossed off my vintage goals very early on. If I could have done things all over again, I would have gone for grail cards first. But the thing is, you don't know how into a hobby you're gonna get. So I can't even say that because everybody has their own journey. We all have our own strategies and our own adventure in this collecting hobby. So everybody has their own thing that works for them. But uh, definitely wanna get into sealed investing more of that. I think that's it's in the long run gonna be a solid play and I've always believed in it. So I'm gonna continue to, I just don't wanna pump it as much as I think everybody else is pumping it. But um, let me know what you guys think of shill bidding and the environment of like eBay and if you think stuff is getting artificially inflated, is this more of like a situation where people just want to average down on their prices and get the best cost basis? Or are we experiencing like the most shill bidding we've ever seen where people are just, you're seeing very low feedback accounts all of a sudden bidding up items way more than they should go for. I've seen tons of examples of this and sometimes I'm like absolutely shocked at what people will pay for stuff. but. The, uh, the other part is that the market is moving up and no one really knows when the market is fully gonna make a move. Uh, we need a couple sales of the same card or the same product to verify whether the market has started really moving up uh, a certain way. So it's kind of hard to say. So sometimes I'm sure when people overpay for stuff, they are genuinely just, they think that the market's gonna move and they wanna get stuff you know, for the fear of missing out, the FOMO aspect of it. Anyways, um, I try to keep it shorter, but I, I'm still working on making shorter videos for you guys just so they're easier to absorb. Anyways, trying to get more in the habit of making videos. It's been a crazy work week, but I have two days off for the first time in a long time. So I'm excited about making some videos and uh, just relaxing at the house, spending time with family. Anyways, Peace out, you guys. Have a fantastic day. At 5,000 subscribers, we will be opening a heavy base set pack. That's going to be gnarly or it's going to be devastating. But you guys are going to see that at 5,000 subs. We are about, I want to say like 80 subscribers or like 78, 79 subscribers away 
from hitting 5,000 subs. And then we're going to open up that pack for a live stream. So I'll see you guys there. And uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow for the live stream. I did order a 151 UPC. You can find those on Amazon by Core TCG. He's a legit seller. I'm excited to get this box and open some more 151. We are trying to complete that set by opening it. I need the Neo King illustration and I need the Hyper Rare Mew. Anyways, guys, peace out. Have a fantastic day. I'll catch you guys tomorrow night.